Hi everybody, I hope you're doing fine. I am. So, uh, I'm here to talk to you about a project that uh, we've been thinking about for a little while at uh, Inverse, where I work. Uh, and it's uh, called FingerBank, so it's a DHCP fingerprint database. Uh, <laughs> come on. My friends are making fun of me, so yeah, that's pretty funny. Assholes. So, <laughs> So I'm here to talk about that, and let's see how it goes. Uh, today, I'm going to first uh, do reminders about device fin fingerprinting, passive fingerprinting, the HTTP fingerprinting, I'm going to cover some defensive and offensive use cases, uh, then announce, quote unquote, finger bank, and uh, talk about what's, what, uh, what's next and what are we, uh, we are interested in doing in the future. So who I am is, uh, I'm uh, Olivier Bailado, I guess, would be a close English equivalent. Uh, I'm uh, working on Packet Fence since uh, 2009 as a lead developer there. I'm also teaching InfoSec uh, in Montreal to undergraduates, having a lot of fun doing that. I do, I'm a really d an open source guy, so uh, really uh, into Android and uh, Linux and stuff. Uh, I'm a new, a new father, I brought my kid here which is an uh, odd choice in Vegas. Uh, I, I'm, it's, it's really not that great, actually, because uh, she's crying all the time. She's seven months old. So it's, well, I wanted my family here, so here they are. Uh, this talk is uh, implementing the Udrink protocol. So if I say something obviously stupid, you can interrupt me, and I'll offer you a beer if uh, you are smarter than me. So uh, let's, let's say it that way. Uh, and also during the Q&A, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll have beer for good questions. So uh, here we go. Um, so device fin fingerprinting, what it does is that it identifies pieces of your software or hardware. Uh, you're probably familiar with Puff and stuff like that. So there are various types of it, operating systems, uh, devices, browser, web server, web application. It's another type of signature, more or less, uh, if you want. So uh, as, as, as easy as that. Um, you know what, my tight, okay. So two approaches of gathering fingerprints. There's an active approach uh, and a passive one. So the active is that you are uh, doing stuff so uh, it, it can be detected. It's more intrusive by nature because it's active. Uh, as opposed to the passive technique, which you only listen on the LAN or on the on a router in between uh, the network. So uh, it, it's really clear, active, passive, and what it means. So I guess I won't focus on that. But uh, it's really completely separated, like the two techniques. And some tools, uh, well, most tools are focused on one approach. Uh, but there are new uh, tools that are doing both. So SynFP, SynFP is one of them. Uh, they, they, you can now uh, feed it a PCAP and it, can, it will do kind of an, a, a passive uh, approach if you want. So why uh, passive, well, not why, but a uh, reminder on passive fingerprinting. So networks are really, really noisy. Uh, you probably already know that. You open up a, t a TCP dump everywhere you get and it's always, there's a lot of stuff going on. And a lot is uh, about broad broadcast and you get all the broadcast traffic. Uh, sometimes also you are in between, so you are the gateway and or you have a, a, a mirror port and so you see all the stuff that's going on. The wall of, sh of sheep is a good example of that. So uh, if you can sit at a spot like that and sniff traffic, then you will see a lot of stuff. And fingerprinting beca becomes really interesting because you'll be able to identify operating systems of your, of your uh, guests, uh, the, the browsers, the version of software and stuff like that. Um, so on the, the LAN, uh, there is DHCP, which is a broadcast protocol that you can uh, use for fingerprinting. Uh, talking about that in the next slide. There is the multicast DNS, the iTunes, all that stuff is very, very verbose, uh, noisy, and helps you a lot of ident identifying uh, s uh, software uh, or hardware that you're using. On the one, uh, Honeypot is kind of, 
you know, you, you could do fingerprinting with a honeypot and you'll see kind of the internet noise if you want. So it's possible to do that uh, on the one also, passively, of course. So DHCP fingerprinting, the meat of the matter. OK, so DHCP is a great network. It helps you, uh, you know, be online easily, low maintenance and stuff. So it's broadcast based, and it's on every lag LAN segment, so every uh, VLAN, if you want. And uh, like through time, we found a way to, uh, well, we, people found a way to uh, aggregate the HTTP, uh, for instance, with uh, IP helpers, sometimes called UDP helpers. So you don't have a DHCP server on every uh, uh, physical segment, which would mean uh, a lot of costs. So because of that, uh, you, you, have, um, uh, you use IP helpers, so your uh, DHCP traffic is all aggregated upstream to a few servers. And this is a, kind of a nice feature because you know, all the information about uh, what's going on IP-based is aggregated. Uh, because of the, the IP helpers. So DHCP fingerprint, because of that, are easy to collect and rarely spoofed. So rarely spoofed, by that I mean if you are, let's say, a pen tester and you want to expose yourself as a voice over IP phone, for instance, well, uh, not a lot of people know that and know how to do that. So it's really, really rarely spoofed. And by that, I mean I, I looked uh, to do it, and the only way I found, I found no tools, no automated tools to, do, uh, to spoof the HTTP uh, fingerprints. And the only way I found to do it was uh, modifying the DH client uh, configuration directly on Linux. So it's seriously, for now, <laughs> for now, pretty reliable. In the future, probably there will be tools, or people will kind of have a backtrack, uh, mimic a Windows XP system. But right now, you can spot backtrack as a Ubuntu system uh, with fingerprints. So uh, the fingerprinting, again, a reminder, what uh, is possible to fingerprint on the HTTP? Well, it's, uh, you could uh, focus on the, the retransmission timing and all the timing stuff on the TTL, so at, uh, IP TTL on the packets. Um, sorry. But the, the greatest, uh, well, what we've been using for packet fence actually is the option 55, which is the, the parameters. So the HTTP is kind of a key value thing. You have, uh, you request a list of uh, options, and then the server sends you the values in it. And there's the, the two way of the game. So um, the client and the server have the, this, uh, you know, option and then parameter. And so option 55 is actually really, really interesting because it's all the stuff that uh, we uh, use the HTTP for and a lot of options that we don't use, but they are still there. So uh, uh, there's an example on the next slide, but I mean, host name, domain name, and stuff like that is all, is all in there. So um, if you want a lot, uh, more details on the, uh, the HTTP, uh, there was a Black Hat uh, Japan uh, presentation which I built on uh, for, for the Finger Bank project that you can, uh, you can check. Uh, it's uh, Eric Coleman and da David Laporte who presented, and uh, it's actually really nice, really detailed into the topic. Uh, so here are, are the option 55 list. So we only focused on these. So, uh, and with this, uh, option 55 only, so no other parameters. We've been, we have a database of uh, 160 different uh, OSs and devices, and it's kind of all blurry together nowadays, OS device and stuff like that. So I, I say slash OS slash devices. And, and this includes a lot of stuff, like scary stuff. Uh, I mean, you got the fluke devices, you've got switches, and now I'm, when I saw that, I'm asking myself, who the hell run DHCP on switches? You know, it's, <laughs> shouldn't all be fixed IPs, but anyway, we got them. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, of it. And so the option uh, 55, it's simply a list of the, the option, as you can probably see on the slide, it is like 1, 15, 3, 6, 44, and it's all uh, because of the client, what they requested, 
only that simple list helps us to uniquely identify a lot of stuff. And like uh, UPS devices, uh, there's uh, Pixie stuff, thin clients, it's really like gaming consoles, smartphones, and uh, we, we can spot Android between uh, each other. So we have like the HTC Android, the Samsung Android, and so uh, it's, it's great, seriously. Uh, I was amazed by that, and that's the reason why we're presenting or proposing Finger Bank, I guess, is that like it's on every LAN, everyone has it, everyone like has this resource that they can, you know, identify what's going on in the network, but no one was really, you know, pushing it, or maybe it was all in uh, proprietary stuff, and I don't use proprietary software, so I, I just don't know about it, but this is the, the, the big reason. So, um, let's, go, let's get into some use cases. Of course, uh, I guess I am into more defensive stuff, but uh, here we go. There's, uh, you can do really, really easily LAN operating system inventory or even, you know, uh, flagging people uh, with Windows 95 and telling them, hey, come on, get, uh, you know, something, something serious, please. So uh, here is a screenshot of what we would pack at fence. Uh, you see the last switch, last port, last VLAN. This is possible with the HTTP option 82, which is uh, implemented in Cisco switches. It's more or less reliable, but still it can help you. So it, it's kind of powerful to have the, the two of them uh, blended in because you will know for a host where it's located and because of the finger bank technology, if I may call it like that, know what OS it's, it's running. So uh, it, 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 it's, it's pretty powerful and interesting for, for uh, network operators to know that. Uh, you can do firewall and, and network access control integration to blacklist end of life stuff, for example, or even better, backtrack uh, or uh, Linux if you want. So uh, this, this is also uh, pretty powerful and we use that in packet fence uh, a lot uh, to, you know, and this is like sliding to the next point, but we do that to automatically register voice over IP devices so that, uh, or printers so that the users don't have to do it themselves, which is, I know, a security problem because we're relying on client-side stuff to actually behave <laughs> on the network. But, I mean, it's a usability problem. You know, someone has the, a choice to make. But So if you are a pen tester, then definitely, I mean, add in your toolkit, I would say, spoofing your uh, DHCP, uh, option uh, 85, uh, 55 list because uh, it can make the network part of uh, the infrastructure do uh, behave differently based on uh, what you are. So offensive use cases, uh, obviously stealth LAN recon. So you can like sit there, hook a device, and then just sniff the traffic and see what's there. And I mean, it's even better when you get uh, Windows 98 popping up and saying, hey, I'm Windows 98 and I want an IP address. So <laughs> now, I mean, you only have to own it like Metasploit and boom, it's, it's done. So the, the, the clients, they come to you actually uh, in that case, you know, instead of you having to end map the network and stuff. So this is, you know, it's a big one. It's really interesting. But uh, afterwards, I was trying to find other use cases, offensive use cases. and. Actually, I guess someone ha will have to come up in the Q&A room and tell me other offensive use cases. I failed at that. So uh, why did we decide to uh, push a finger bank? Uh, because you, you saw it. It's so simple, this stuff. It's only a list of option numbers uh, separated by commas. But I hate information hidden in silos. And we need to be together if you want to spot devices. We get a lot of fingerprints, and we just can't cope with the, the flow. And they are all anonymous, so we can't you know, ask back. Or even if we do ask back, let's say we have the opportunity to ask back, people don't really know. You know they, they run the software. It listens to everything. And they don't even know the device that, that, that are uh, broadcasting on their network. So uh, the, the, pro the, the project's goal is really about sharing it, talking about it, getting this out. And so this is why uh, we, we're launching the, the website and the mailing list. Uh, yeah, so raise awareness and stuff like that. 
So what is it actually? It's pretty simple. We um, uh, popped open a website and we decided to just uh, output the signatures and uh, the d documentation and the mailing list. Uh, we're probably going to uh, open an IRC channel too, but it's really links to the, the existing signature um, and we, we just pack packaged it uh, in a nice uh, format. And then based on the feedback of the community, uh, I mean, we, there's a lot of stuff we could do with uh, the HTTP fingerprinting and based on uh, who's interested. And we're, we're um, anticipating uh, pick up by you know, the larger uh, network vendors, uh, hopefully. And so uh, with that, there will be definitely like more uh, offensive tools focus on that, defensive tools too, and uh, reporting and stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so for now, who's backing it? Uh, uh, the, the, the guy who wrote the paper, uh, Eric Coleman, um, wrote the, the HTTP uh, fingerprint paper that was presented at Black Hat uh, Japan. He's also uh, started to write another one on the HTTP version 6. So it's an interesting. I haven't read that yet, but uh, I really, he's really into it and uh, a lot into passive uh, fingerprinting. Uh, David Laporte was Packetfence's original uh, founder. Uh, I think he's working uh, at um, Harvard as, uh, on their network. And uh, ourselves, uh, uh, Inverse, who is uh, sponsoring time and servers and stuff. Uh, not that much resources, but still, uh, they're, they're still paying me to do it, which is great. So <laughs> they're backing it. Uh, so what's the, 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 the future of Fingerbank? Well, again, we need uh, the maybe probably better tool to share because a lot of them actually uh, are close to each other in the, when you look at the fingerprints. And so uh, we would really need uh, better tools to you know, uh, find closest match and stuff like that. Uh, also, right now, the, the data formats, PacketFence uses a s stupid uh, any file uh, format type. And Satori, which, was, uh, which is Eric uh, Coleman's uh, tool, is using XML. So we, we want to consolidate, it, consolidate sorry, the formats and so uh, you know, have better reuse over the, uh, with that. Uh, and then we, we, we want, and this is the main focus, is we really, really want a lot of mind share around the fingerprints and so that when we get new obscure fingerprints that actually someone uh, who will be subscribed will know about it and will be able to uh, you know, uh, say, oh, hey, this is Intel when it's in a, a BIOS boot mode. It's, act it's actually doing the HTTP and sending that. So there's a lot of the, the obscure fingerprints that we'll need uh, help on. Uh, that's pretty much it, and uh, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see uh, you in the debriefing room if you're into fingerprinting, I guess. Thank you.